We started in high school, so my senior year. So I had been playing in bands before that, and it was all like kind of male dominated, and I was getting really sick of getting told exactly what to play by some dude who thought because he knew like who Galaxy 500 were that he was like better than me. And I was like, okay, yeah. gotta buy Voices t-shirt. Like I'm done. <laughs> um, that hits hard. It's it's too real. It's too much. And um, there was a lot of that. Okay. And I had been playing in bands and I had done my own project before that, but it was kind of, it was just uh, like I was playing ukulele, so it doesn't really count. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so I picked up an electric because it was easier to play than mm-hmm. an acoustic. And I was like, oh, wow, it can be loud. Oh, I really <laughs> like that. So yeah. um, I was putting together this benefit concert, and I realized that I didn't want to play by myself. So I reached out to a couple of my friends. One of my friends was in the first iteration of whatever project that was, but she was playing cello and she had never played bass before. And so I was like, hey, do you want to play music? She was like, yeah, I've always wanted to try bass. And so we kind of picked up our instruments at the same time. And then our drummer is just like amazing and has been playing since she was like six or whatever. And our violinist is the same way, studied classically. And I just got lucky, they said yes. And then we played a show and then I was like, oh, you guys are really good. (laughs) Do you want to keep playing? And they said yes, and here we are. Awesome. Um, So did you guys like all kind of go to separate colleges and how did you deal with like keeping the band together during that time? Yeah, we all went to different schools um, studying like completely different things. So our schedules are kind of at odds with each other. But I mean, to be honest, we didn't really play very much in college. Yeah. Just because it was like, you know, I'm in New York, Michaela was in Chicago for a bit and then moved back to Ohio, um, Andrea was in Columbus, and like, she studied abroad in Chile a couple times, which oh, cool. is so cool. She's doing really, really cool, like, linguistics wow. work. Okay. It's amazing. You should ask her about her thesis. Yeah. But, um, so like, you know, we're all over the place and we ended up just kind of getting lucky that we could play shows whenever we were in town on breaks and we recorded this album and so we were working on that and then it came out and we toured in the summer you know it's like it sucks because there's you want to be doing more and you see all these bands that are like you know grinding every weekend playing shows really putting the work in and then being able to do that for only short periods of time it's like oh but please like let us do more and so we're on tour for a month right now and that's kind of like okay longest tour we've ever done so far and i know like we saw andrew bird last night oh my gosh and andrea loves him so yeah. it's grace uh we love esperanza spalding yeah we love like i don't know i i always blink when i get asked this just because there's so much from four very different people michaela loves paramore okay. more than anything <laughs> in the world yeah. um just like early jazz stuff, um, punk music, Fugazi, like, you know, orchestral stuff. Max Richter, the like orchestral composer, yeah. he's amazing. Just kind of drawing from 8,000 yeah. different places and then trying to not make it sound like one thing, trying to make it sound like we've been inspired by all of these things. And I guess, like, kind of going off of that, people have you know tried to label your sound as a bunch of different things like we found like soft punk baroque rock art rock moth music atmospheric like how do you respond to that and like do you guys i mean i get the feeling you don't really label yourself but um genres stupid Uh, yeah like genres are (laughs) anything can be anything Mm -hmm. like labels are meaningless because now you can say you're anything yeah and people kind of have to take your word right. for it We're just kind of like okay so i mean we put like moth music nature punk marxist rock like as <laughs> tags on our band camp because yeah. it's like it's kind of funny. whatever to say like oh yeah we play indie rock it's like yeah we do right at its core i guess but also that kind of doesn't take into account the eight thousand influences exactly. that i tried to explain yeah like, i don't know i feel like 
this is getting into like Spotify algorithms and shit. But, yeah, like, go for it. <laughs> like, I feel like genres now are just so people can pitch themselves to different Spotify things. Like, oh, like are make you, it on the indie rock playlist. Are you going to be or, on the indie yeah. rock playlist? Are you going to be in the bedroom pop playlist? Oh my god, are you going to be bedroom. on the R and B playlist? Are you going to yeah. be on the, you know? country music on a summer night in <laughs> Indiana. Like, this hyper-specific, like, you know, millions of followers on Spotify. Yeah. I feel like that's the main reason why people are doing, like, genres that they might not otherwise be. Because it's easier. Yeah. And it, it you helps get more you get listeners And you, sure. you do the whole thing. I mean, we market ourselves as indie rock. I don't know if we really are. I don't know. Maybe we are. I can't tell. <laughs> I just, I just sing just, things. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, so you mentioned before that you guys were all, or I guess also in your Spotify bio, it says that you guys were kind of all the token girls in different male dominated bands. So like, what does it mean to you to kind of, you know, be in an all girl band and what do you, um, I guess like, what do you think needs to be done to kind of do away with, like, token girls and token people? Um, yeah, what's your take on that? I mean, playing in a band with all women is the best thing that's ever happened to me. Hardcore, full stop. Um, I think it allows a sense of musical and emotional freedom that I wouldn't otherwise be able to access. Um, I do think that the whole, like, female-fronted as genre thing... Mm-hmm kind of just needs to stop um because being a woman in a band is more than just being a woman in a band yeah like i'm on one hand i'm glad that there's finally being like space being made for women and you know non-binary people in music but i'm also like are you going to only allow a specific set of women and non-binary people who fit into the like acceptable manufacturable consumable versions of those things Mm -hmm. to succeed like what kind of standards are there for women how much higher are they um I don't know I think getting rid of token girls is a great idea I think that it's not going to happen for a long time because you know there's still there's a sense of risk for when sure. women get signed to labels, there's a lot of misallocation of resources. There's a lot of like women who get stuck making quote bedroom pop yeah. forever because no labels are willing to take a risk on someone who like sounds different than what women are told that they're allowed to sound like in the like you know twangy indie rock, yeah, you know, guitar solo, lead lines, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> <laughs> boom, boom, boom. And, like, the, the one bass. Right, you know, right. Like, no, as long sure. as you're doing exactly what they think you're going to do, then you can be successful as a woman in music. But if you're not, you have to work much harder. Word, yeah. Um, okay, so you guys released an album last year, yeah. almost. Can you tell us a little bit about, like, the recording process, especially with, like, you all being in school, like... How is it coordinating, like, being in the studio or if you recorded somewhere else? Like, just talk about it. Yeah, sure. Um, we... This was a long process. Yeah. Our friend recorded it at this studio that has since been torn down. Rest in peace. <laughs> Rest in peace, Ultra Suede. He did so much good oh. for so many people. We love you. <laughs> um, yeah, rip. Um, <laughs> but we recorded it there... You know, our friend got free studio time because he was, like, interning there. So he engineered it for us, and we were going to work with him, and then things got kind of complicated, and so we ended up kind of shelving it for a little bit and not really thinking about it. We were like, okay, how how the fuck are we going to make this record? Right, right. Like, how is this going to kind of come back out of the woodwork and become an album? And we played a show with Y in Cincinnati and the head of Joyful Noise came to that show and we were like (laughs) and then a couple months later they were like let's do this and we were like 
fuck, okay. <laughs> and so then we decided that uh, Yoni was going to produce it. And so all those tracks kind of got dug back up because we, like, we had them and they were ready right. to be, you know, ready to be fucked with, ready to be twisted knobs on. So it kind of just jumped immediately into the mixing process. And then uh, I actually, so I did a couple things as, like, a solo act while I was in college because I was still like writing music and I released something I guess summer of 2017 which feels so far away right now it feels <laughs> yeah, that's like crazy. that's when I graduated high school <laughs> yeah that's insane yeah. <laughs> um yeah summer of 2017 I put out like a solo EP called Moon Like Sour Candy and I sent the title track to Yoni and he was like oh we have to put this on the album <laughs> and I was like okay so I like flew into Cincinnati we did it in one day we just tracked everything and then I flew back and continued to do school and like we just did I wasn't there for a lot of the mixing okay. uh, Grace was like our ass- assistant producer she did amazing work some of the really like cool effects and things were her idea and like they would try stuff and send it and then we would listen to it we would call them we would have facetime sessions like just you know so much technology yeah (laughs) went into it um and so we you know worked with yoni and kind of he would go far one way and we would pull him back the other way and we would go one way and he would temper us with this other thing and finally we ended up with almost and then we released it and it got put out into the world yeah awesome um so kind of you mentioned like signing with joyful noise um how's it been like kind of joining the ranks of that lineup and oh man they're so cool. <laughs> like, they were one of my favorite labels in high school. Wow. Which I remember sitting and during the recording of our first album, um, which we did just like in our friend's living room, um, I remember sitting and listening to like a Joan of Arc record mm-hmm. and being like, ah, oh, it's so good. <laughs> I love Joyful Noise. They have so many good bands. And then flash forward to like, you know, three years later, I, if I had told my like, 18 year old self like hey you're gonna sign to one of your favorite labels she would have been like shut the fuck up (laughs) no like go go away so I don't know it's they're some of the kindest people that I've ever met they're lovely I have only good things to say about them that's Um, awesome yeah I think they do a really good job of just like there's so much like diverse musical music on that sure. label and they do a really good job of just like making it into a really cool pieces of art with like all the vinyl stuff they do yeah I'm for sure big fan um okay so last question like yeah. what's next for you guys um you have this kind of one month thing and then you know where's everybody off to and yes. what's what what's you working on yeah um we're doing this we're gonna be back in cincinnati in like mid-april okay. i think and then I mean a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Like I'm doing some composing for film scores. Very so I'm cool. doing two of those, one for a short, one for a feature. Um Andrea has to finish her thesis. Yeah. And then she's <laughs> graduating. Um you know, Grace is actually currently in San Francisco doing a co op. So we have oh, cool. uh, a sub bassist yeah. who is amazing. I love them so much. Um and so Grace is finishing that she's still in school Michaela's still in school uh doing a bunch of stuff and honestly we're just gonna keep touring yeah and we're gonna make another album I'm ready you know all those songs are from 2016 yeah I'm sitting on a backlog like let's do it let's 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 bring the backlog to the front love that (laughs) whatever that means I don't know I I'm it's been a long week. <laughs> no, this is awesome. Um, yeah, anything else you want to add? Or, um, you know, want to tell the world? <laughs> I mean, y'all are from College Radio, right? Yeah. Yeah, College Radio is one of the coolest things in the world. Um, I love it, and I think that it's one of 
it's A, an underutilized resource, and B, something that, if you're not in college yet, I highly recommend looking into. Um, yeah, underrepresented in educational programming forever. 